What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So I'm talking about a few topics in this video here again today. Jeepers Creepers 4, Hellraiser, Halloween Ends, and Joker 2. Some cast, small casting news about Joker 2. So just to jump on into it, the new look at the Creeper, or there's been a new look that was sent to me uh, of the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers 4. It was discovered online and shout out to you Kane if you're listening to this for bringing it to my attention. So this image you see here on your screen, if only it didn't have this green filter, uh, it would give us an, a, an even better glance at this because it's giving us a good glance at the wings in the film. So it looks like the Creeper might be in some sort of panic here or something similar I would hope to Jeepers Creepers 2 and not what we saw at the end of 3, you know, getting down on his knees and wailing out like that with the bats flying or the crows flying around him. They didn't even have, I think, actual screams for the movie. They put out like sound sound bites from the first one. If you go back and watch that movie, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm curious how his wings will be explained back, if at all. I've talked about this in other videos. Going off of the ending of, of, of 2, the Creeper has lost an arm, leg, and lost both of its wings prior to the final encounter it had with Taggart before its 23-day feeding cycle had ran out. The trailer for this movie, Jeepers Creepers Reborn, just seems to suggest that there's going to be a corpse reawakening and that's all that's going to be happening. Because we see the corpse crawling out of the Taggart barn, so something must go down, I would assume, with someone portraying Taggart or something else goes down that we don't see. Uh, but we'll see what happens when the movie actually comes out, if this is explained or not, because obviously the wings are CG. So we'll also see how much CG went into this final product. I just don't want to end up in a position where we have the creeper back with no explanation of how it got all these things back. Are they going to ignore that and say that the sewing that Taggart did doesn't matter? The things that were all still there because he did lose limbs. But then again, that would be minor stuff compared to whatever bigger problems we're about to get. But here's a snippet, or there was a snippet released, jumping into Hellraiser. A snippet was released of the Hellraiser score by Ben Lovett. And it, this came out a couple days back when they had all these other things coming out. We know Jamie Clayton shared a first look at herself as Pinhead. Now, when I was listening to this, it sounded haunting and familiar. Chilling, haunting, and familiar. So this little snippet, it sounded familiar to me because Ben also did that wonderful score for the Night House last year. So I was listening to it and I'm like, this sounds like stuff for stuff for the Night House. And I'm looking at the name and I went to go do some research and I'm like, oh, it makes sense. Same guy, same person. Wonderful score, sounds like we're about to have for the upcoming Hellraiser movie. Uh, so we also got this first look at the configuration box, which we know will open the door to the Cenobites hell dimension if the puzzle is solved. And I'm actually very curious to see if this new iteration of Hellraiser, I'm sure other people have talked about this. I'm curious to see if this new iteration of Hellraiser, if they're somehow going to do a twist in a way to kind of tie it to the first one, because David Bruckner has made it clear this is not a remake. It's kind of like just fleshing out an expanded universe. What if... The Hellraiser or the Pinhead we're about to meet is actually Kirsty. If they end up doing a narrative in which we find out Kirsty took up the role that we know Elliot Spencer Spencer filled, and that's how this film will tie itself to the original, uh, if at all, because Bruckner again has made it clear that this is not a remake. We know that the film, going off the plot details, the plot synopsis that were released, says it follows a young woman struggling with addiction when she comes into possession of an ancient puzzle box unaware that its purpose is to summon the Cenobites, a group of sadistic supernatural beings from another dimension. So we'll see what ends up happening when Hellraiser releases later next month or later this year, early next month in October on the 7th, I believe on Hulu. And I am curious to know what you guys think about that little idea of this actually being Kirsty taking up the role from Elliot in this new Hellraiser movie. That's a new development they could do because I know that was introduced in the comics. So I'm wondering if they'll borrow some of that and bring it to the big bring it to the film series so jumping into halloween ends halloween ends released an image last week of michael myers killing someone viewer non chimed in over on twitter and revealed in a tweet that this character now if you don't want any spoilers i guess i'll give a spoiler warning here if you don't want any spoilers on who this character is probably should click off right now if you don't care keep watching viewer non revealed in a tweet that this character that you see being stabbed like this is Corey Cunningham's mother. Now the answer the answer is why would or the question I have is why would Michael kill Corey's mom? 
The answer is probably that he wouldn't do that. And this is Corey killing his own mother. But why? Again, going off of other videos I've done, just to regurgitate, Corey, going off of assumptions, must be getting bullied by multiple people. We see him getting getting uh, yanked up by Michael in the teaser. We see in the plot details that it mentions he'll, he'll stand accused of something he probably didn't completely 100% do with deranged intent as much as it was an accident and he might become just like the target of the town because they're sick of stuff like Michael Myers happening and they take all of this aggression out on Corey uh, ignoring the fact that they're bullying him which is also very interesting I'm, I'm sure all of this could be executed very well but on paper thinking about it it does sound a little bit bizarre it sounds a little disappointing but again Corey must be getting bullied by multiple people and it might be something more sinister going on with his own mother because if true this death probably won't be that sad to watch depending on what we see between her and Corey because I think viewer non also has stated in that tweet that this character's death will be satisfying so Corey Cunningham's mother must be bringing him a lot of trauma or just bringing trouble into his life so we'll see how she fares when she comes up against her own son dressed as Michael Myers. But if you don't believe you or not, that's fine. Cause I know a lot of people are like, oh, he he got that one thing wrong with the with the hobo look. You know, not all of us are gonna be correct 100 percent One one or two or three, five out of countless other ch moments where you were correct doesn't mean you're unreliable now. So I, I believe that that's Corey Cunningham's mother and that Corey is killing his own mom. And we'll find out why when Halloween ends releases later this year in October. So just to jump into Joker 2, the Joker 2 cast grows as Brendan Gleeson joins in on the fun. There's no word on who he's playing, so we'll learn more down the road. We know that we have Joaquin back. Gaga is his is his uh Gaga is his Harley Quinn. Zazie Beats is back and the film is supposed to shoot later this year. I'm assuming they're still gonna do that mad love angle be going off of the fact that they're gonna have a lot of this movie set in Arkham Asylum. And a lot of you are still disappointed or looking forward to that musical aspect. So we'll see what ends up happening when this movie releases and what we'll continue to learn when filming starts up. But let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.